we go. Okay, so I created this one with Pear Deck so that we could walk through some of the features at the beginning um, so that you can learn about like the different options that they have and see it from a student's perspective. And then I'll show you how I made that. Um, so, All right, so if you guys want to like open another window or another tab, and then you're gonna put in this code, well, you wanna type in this website, joinpd.com. And I can even actually too, I can put it in the chat, which is a nice feature as well. Yeah, so you'll go to joinpd.com and then type in the code. And then as you start to put your code in and log in, it will show me how many students are in. So there's one, two. So it's nice if you, you know, have quite a few students or you have 20 students in the room, you know, because they're on Zoom, then you'll know how many you have to wait for for this piece. Um, and then we'll click start. And so on your screen, and at any minute, if you do have kids that come in late, like if we have people come in late, that code is in the top right hand corner. And I'm actually going to use an iPad just so I can see it, your point of view as well to make sure we're all good. All right. Hold on one second. Okay, so Pear Deck, so this is, hi, I'm Christopher, if you don't know me yet. Um, so basically, as you go through Pear Deck, you can start to add questions. So right now on your screen, you'll see, you should see both this screen that I have on mine, and then also um, an option to choose one of the options, a multiple choice option option. So what is your role in education? So then you would click the option that best fits you. And then on my end, I can see down here that I have two out of the two responses. Um, and then from there, I can also click show response. And that way, as a whole class, you can kind of see what the you know, who picked or how many picked what. Um, so you could use this for lots of different things, um, you know, picking what you're going to do next. Um, if they have an understanding, ticket out the door, stuff like that. Um, and then from there, you can also lock screens on the students so that they can no longer click anything once you want to have all their answers in, um, which is a nice option as well. And then when you're done and you're ready to move on, you just take those off and then you can move to the next screen. Um, so the, the that one was the first option, um, which is the multiple choice option that you have um, that you can add in questions as. Um, so Pear Deck is, I mean, what is it? It's basically um, an interactive tool that you can utilize within your Google Slide Decks. Um, and it is a Google add-on. So it is found in the add-on store within Slides. Um, and it was created by teachers for teachers to help improve, you know, classroom community um, and, and making sure that you have 100% engagement with your lessons. Um, so some benefits, obviously you give everyone the voice. Um, you don't just have to hear the same, you know, student who raises their hand every time. Um, the smartest person in the room is the room because everyone has the chance to answer, right? Um, you hold attendees accountable because I have at the bottom, I can see how many have responded so far. Um, I can, you know, point out, hey, I only have 19 out of 20. I'm waiting on one person. Make sure you put in your response. Um, and then you can also share screenshots of your dashboard responses with your attendees. So that information that we looked at before where you put in your answers to multiple choice, um, I could take screenshots and then share that later on and we have that data um, and then we can compare it if we have similar questions later on. 
or any, I mean, really anything. So another type of question is the text response question. So this one asks how often, um, oh, typo, do you use Google Slides for a lesson? So then you would put in your response. And we would see there's two. We could show our responses again. And you can even see, so this one has, this person is still typing. And so you can see that as they start to type and then stop. And then if they were to add something later, if you're, you're ready to move on and you don't want any more again, just click the lock screen and they can no longer type, which is nice. You kind of have control over what they're able to do at that point. All right. Again, you have the multiple choice question option, but here's another way that you could use it. What percentage of students are engaged while you present your lessons? Um, so normally, what would you say your percentage is? And again, we would have, we could see, and you can even, as you change your answer, you can see it move. Thanks, whoever's doing that. <laughs> kind of showing how that would work, which is nice. And then again, once you're like, okay, we're done, we lock the screen. Um, you also have the option to add in a new prompt. Um, so that's a nice option as you're like going through, you can add in, I mean, there's ones that are already in here that are ones that are often used, you know, like a KWL is, I mean, I know that I used it a lot as a fourth grade teacher, but you could kind of create or create or modify some of these as well, but these are, are nice options and they do have a couple of different ones. So you can scroll through and pick, which is cool. All right. Another option is the number option. So this one says, what percentage of students would you like to be engaged? Um, so this will give you the option to type in a number. And why you do that? Mine's asking for a verification, so I just got to type this in. All right, so again, we can see those. So with the number option, um, you get a um, scatter plot. So Normally, obviously, um, you would have multiple numbers going on. And so it'll show you kind of like the mean, um, the outliers, and then like an area in between. It usually highlights it in red. Oh, there you go. So you can see there's your 150%. That would be amazing. Um, so you can kind of see. And then as you add more in, it will kind of, again, change your your how what your um, numbers are going to be and, and all of that. So it modifies as you have new responses and stuff like that, which is really cool because it's, you know, just like what you need in that moment. So 75%. Oh, man. <laughs> all right. And then another option is to add in resources, which for even for you, um, I think that that would be super powerful for, for younger um, elementary teachers. I know that would be super powerful because typing in a URL can be cumbersome. Um, but so this one asks, where can you find um, more Pear Deck resources? So you should be seeing on the right half of your screen, the actual link. And then on the left hand of the screen, you can see like my screen, what's on there right now. And so you can even go through and um, like look through that, that website link, which is really cool because you can do it within the moment while you're still presenting. Um, and then when you want them to stop looking at that, you just click lock screen and it you know turns your screen black until you're ready to move on, which is cool. Again, you have the power. So Pear Deck also has templates um, that you can use. And so there's a link, I use the, the web browse or the URL piece again. Um, and so this one shows a bunch of templates that they've already created that you can pull in and then modify, which is really nice. Um, 
we're actually going to look at, I think the next one. So the next one is a drawing feature and the drawing feature is actually part of the pro version. Um, but because it was in this Pear Deck when I downloaded it, it still lets me use it because it was already preloaded in there. So I didn't have to do it. But if I tried to go in later on and add drawing to a different slide, it won't let me. Um, so, so you can kind of get around the, the paid for version just a little um, if it's already built in. So I changed it. So now it says circle strategies you'd like to try um, next time you use Google Slides. So there's the text choice number and website where, which are the four free version pieces. And with this one, you can see, and now I've added myself in, so um, I, I can see it as well. So you can see there's some different choices and you can have students use different colors too. So, um, so there's mine. There you go, see, and you can see as it, as it comes in as well, which is cool. Um, and with the drawing feature, they do have, like if you were looking at your screen, there are a bunch of different options. I mean, there's like the highlighter, the line, the text, and then there's an eraser. So lots of different choices. But again, that's part of the paid for version. So if it's in the deck already, you can utilize it and modify the slide to fit what you want. If it's not though, um, you won't be able to add it. Um, they also have different pieces for distance learning. So there is this video, which I'm not going to play for you guys, but I'll send you the, the slide so that you could watch it later on if you wanted. But basically, it's it'll walk you through the steps on how to set it up on your end and the student's end. Um, but in this, and pretty much everything that they create, they assume that you're paying for Pear Deck um, because they want you to. So it will tell you stuff like um, your teacher dashboard, you want to make a separate screen, which the teacher dashboard is also part of the paid for piece. Um, so, so there's different things that as you watch it, you'll just have to know, okay, I can't actually do that piece, but, but I can do you know something else. Um, and then of course, always the question of pricing. So um, on your screen, you should see the, if you scroll down, there's the pricing guide. So I'm currently using the basic one, which is free, um, but for an individual, it's 150 a year. Um, with that though, you do get some pretty cool things like the drawing. And then there's also a draggable option where you can put little icons and they can drag it. So you can have nice like choice options for that. Um, there's also, um, let me look at my note. So this, you can do the student pace presentation right from the get-go, um, which allows your students to do it at any point um, on their own, move through the slides, answer the questions. Um, and then the teacher dashboard has a lot of things like um, you're able to see who's answering what question. Um, so you get that formative assessment you know, right there, right then. And then it saves it right into your Google Drive as well. So you can look at that later on. Um, there's um, like being able to go back and look at who answered what. Um, there's being able to, it's, there's like some different interaction pieces as well. Um, but the free version is still a good version as well. It's a good starting place. And so here are this is just the resources I use. And then when you get all the way to the end, you click end. And then I would name my session so that I could go back and look at it. And this is especially important if you have to pay for so you can see your um, students stuff that they answered and how they answered. Um, but for you guys, it should then now show up like a how did it go, good or bad. Um, and so you can rate it as well. And then I can see that. That is the one thing with the free version that I can see is how you rated it or how it rated overall with the class. Um, but now, so now you've kind of seen what it looks like for students. On the teacher end, um, what you would want to do is you would go to a slide deck that you've already created um, and you would click add-ons and then get add-ons. And 
and from within here, it's most likely going to be one of the first ones because it's a very popular add on for Google Slides. Um, and so you would go and click on it. And then there would be a install option right here. Mine's already there. So obviously it doesn't have that. But yours, you would install, give it the rights um, that it needs. And then after that, when you come back to your slide deck, go to the same place add ons. It should be one of the options right from that drop down. And then you just click open Pear Deck add ons and it'll work. And then you should get this little sidebar piece right here. And this is where you're going to be able to start adding in those question options. And this is also how you're going to want to start your presentation. You'll do it from right within here. Um, so from here, again, you would start to add those questions. All you have to do is go to the slide that you want to add a question to. So if here is the slide that I want to add it to, I would click the whatever, which one I want. The four top ones are those free version ones. The one with the stars are the pro version. So if I wanted to add like a text question, you would click on it, it would open the screen, and then it's going to pop this piece down there and it's good to go. So it is good to know that when you add one of these question types onto your slide, it doesn't add the question, you have to have the question on the slide or you have to remember it to say it. Um, and then it also adds in your little um, text down here um, or your teacher's notes. It, so it says like this is a Pear Deck text slide so you know exactly what kind it is. Um, and there's also different icons that go with each. Um, and then to edit the question, go back to ask a question in the Pear Deck sidebar. So you would come back over here, you would click on it. And then if you could modify anything, you would do it within there. The text one is pretty easy. You just have to add it. If you were to add the choice option, you're obviously going to have to add those multiple choice pieces in. Um, so this one actually already has the multiple choice options. So actually, let me pick a different one. So we go from the beginning. Okay, so it normally look up like this. So you have your three options to begin with, and you could type it in. So, you know, yes, no, maybe so. And then you can add more if you want or take them away. You can also reorganize them depending on how you want them. And then you just click update slide and it's gonna add that piece on to the bottom. Also something good to know is that you do not want to delete this. So you don't ever wanna click on it and delete it um, because if you delete it, it gets rid of it. Um, so unless you wanna get rid of it, don't delete it. Um, but again, this icon is slightly different. So it's got the multiple choice piece. And then it also has down here, what are the possible multiple choices that they can pick? So yes, no, and maybe so in the order that I moved them into. Um, the other ones, number, this one works very similar to text because you really don't have to add any options. So it's just telling you that you're going to, uh, on your student's device, they're gonna see an option to put in a number, and then you're going to get that um, scatter plot once it's done. And so you would just update slide, and there you go. There isn't an option to like limit the number span. Um, so if you have kids who are going to guess like one million five hundred, you know, for something that should be like ten, um, it's going to happen. Um, but I wouldn't obviously say that to them because then they know, but it's it's there, so you know. Um, and then again, the icon is slightly different with the, almost looks like a calculator. And then the last one that's for free is the website option. So with the website option, you would add in your URL right here. And so we'll go, um, I wonder if it will. Um, 
and sometimes it does stuff like that. So you might have to like, let's see. Sorry, I got all my Zoom pieces in front of it. And so it may show up like that. That would be something I would want to test beforehand. Um, with all of the ones that I put in the slide already, like the Pear Deck options, it did show up in actual preview. So, um, so it says all sites must have HTTPS to ensure that all student data remains private and safe. If you aren't seeing a website, the URL you entered is either is not working, not embeddable or not secure. So that is also a good something to know. Um, you could probably pick some other ones. But what you would do is you would just click update slide and it would add it to the bottom and it would look very similar to this one. So it would have like a computer look to it um, and then say like the, the paradeck.com slash templates. So that was my website and then um, your students would see it on their screen as well. So it is something that you would want to test beforehand to make sure that you could actually use that website within it. Um, I guess some of them don't work though. Uh, again, the drawing and draggable options are premium. So you do have to pay for those, but they do also have um, audio slides that you can add. So if you have students who need to hear it, if they're going to go through it by themselves, um, you can add your own audio slides. So you would just click the add audio. It is going to, it'll ask you for um, permission to, to use your audio on your computer. So you obviously want to allow with that. And then this one already has one on it. So it's going to play it, but I can delete it and add my own, or I can upload it as well. So if you already have something pre-recorded, um, and then you just add it to the slide. So we can do an example real quick. Save and add audio. So there it is. So then they can press that if they want to listen. All right. Any questions about those things before I keep moving? No? Okay. Um, so some other options. They do have a bunch of different things down here, like featured content, which be internet awesome, is a um, digital citizenship type thing that they've added or that that Google has. So now Pear Deck is also slightly involved with that too. And then they have a little short like walkthrough video down here. Um, some other pieces, their template library, we kind of looked a little at that when we could have added a um, new question type, but they do have like lesson builder options, you know, learning development, and you can go into them and kind of check out ones that they have and then add them to your slides. So it just add it right into your slides, already pre-built, which is nice because um, it's already set up. And then you can see kind of what it has down here as well in the teacher um, notes option. Um, they also have up here, if you click on the three vertical lines, they have a little how does Pear Deck work, another video that you could quickly watch. Um, you can publish and share your lessons as well. Um, I obviously, if it has any information about students, stuff like that, I wouldn't do that. Um, normally, I don't even do that, but it is an option. When you signed in to Pear Deck using the joinpd.com and then the code, it should have asked you to sign in with your email. Um, and that truly is more for the paid for version because then I can see whose answers go with, um, with you know, the account. But I can also go back and look, and I'll show you in a second, when we go to the review session, I can see who logged in. So that's kind of nice because then you have 
an account of who was there that day and who actually participated ish to a point you don't get all of the information like you would with the paid for if you were doing something with like teachers like what we were doing right now um, and i didn't want to show you that feature you can toggle it off and when students join they'll get like a little avatar and a nickname um, so it keeps them anonymous as well um, even in your eyes so it's usually like you know like a panther or a walrus or whatever um, but you can toggle that back on. You just have to do that before you start the, the session or the lesson. Um, and then the last part is your review sessions. So it always likes to ask you if you would like to um, keep you know using the paid for version. You do get a 30 day premium trial. So if you really like it and you wanna try it, um, you can do that. And then each time you do a session, what you can do is at the end, you'll save it with a nickname or a deck name, and it will be in order chronologically. So you can see here's the one that we just did. Um, and if I click on it, you can open it back up or it asks you if you want to open dashboard, but again, it will tell you that you need to pay for it. Um, you can also must be this one. Oh, it was that one. So here you can see the student options um, and we can see then who all signed in. Um, and so the first one should be you. And then the next ones after that will be your um, students who logged in with their email. Um, and then, so if I come over to the teacher side, again, we'll see that as well. And then they do have um, the option to like rename it, archive it, and then export to spreadsheet. Again, like the export to spreadsheet option really doesn't matter if it's not, um, if you don't have a paid for version, because you're not going to get that data. So that is the sessions and all of them are saved. And I think oh yeah, it says sessions are archived after 30 days. So that's something good to know. If you're trying to save, you know, who all attended what, I would highly recommend screenshotting that. And that way you have that information for later on or writing it down somewhere. Um, the other thing I did want to tell you about, and we kind of said this before we started, is that there is two options when you start the lesson. So there is the instructor paced activity, which is what we did. Um, and then there's the student paced activity. This is a part of the paid for version. But when we do the instructor paced option, and I'm going to log back in. So we can see it. So S H Z D T. Okay. So when you start, you have an option in the bottom right hand corner. So you have, you know, your show responses, lock screen, new prompt. You have the three um, vertical dots. And within those options, you have like the make full screen. Um, and then you can see, oh, come on. There's the two premium options. And then you also have the turn on student paste option. So with this, it gives you this little screen that says navigating through slides in student paste mode will not affect the projector or student displays to bring everyone back together turn off student pace to assign this for homework, send your students to there. So what you could do is say, okay, I got it. And now students, and you can kind of see it, I can even hold this up. Students can move through the slides on their own, which is nice. The only thing is I do think that you have to have this screen up in presentation mode the whole time. So if you did this, you could maybe leave it up, 
minimize it, put it in the background or whatever. And then the end of the day, like if you said you only have today to do it, then they could possibly do that. You also have, um, if we go back in here, if we click on to student pace mode, there is this um, assign this for homework and you can use this link and send it to them and they should be able to do it student paced as well. Now, I'm not 100% sure if I get off this, I guess we could try it. Let's see. So it should take them to this and then they should be able to move through it. Now let's double check if I get out of it. And I end it. And see my iPad one just turned off, the one that I was doing in student pace mode. So now it does. So they can't, I don't think they can do it for homework unless you had it open. I'll try it one more time and see if I can get back in. Yeah, so you would have to have your, your teacher one open, even if they're doing the homework mode. So just leave it open, you know, if you do it for the whole day and that way you give them that time if they didn't come or something um, to your session. But yeah, 